So far in our original art show and tell series, collectors have been showing off some amazing published art. I've decided to do something different and share some of my favorite commissions. It's fitting for me because the first real piece of art I got was a commission. This Nexus painting by Steve Rude. Back around 2002, I was at San Diego Comic Con when I ran to Steve and his wife Janelle at their booth. They were both lovely and I had a great chat with them. At that time, Steve was doing commissions as a fundraiser for his animated Nexus project. They were really modest and nice about it. There was no pressure at all. So I decided to go for the top of the line option, which was an oil painting. It was the most I had ever spent on anything hobby related. Of course, I requested Nexus. The estimated turnaround was about a year and as I recall, they beat that by plenty. I was blown away when I got this delivered to me. I didn't know the art would be so big. It's about 20 by 30. I love what Steve did. He did too, because a short while later, he asked me if he could use it as the cover for his coffee table art book. I was so new to art that I didn't realize what a big deal that was, but I was happy to say yes. So my first piece of art, which was an unpublished commission, became a published cover. Pretty cool. This is a commission of The Manhattan Projects by Nick Batara. The Manhattan Projects is one of my favorite comics of the last 10 years, and it was through meeting Nick that I ultimately decided to become an art rep. So this piece has a special meaning for me. For those who know the title, there are no covers for this series, at least no traditional comic book covers. There are some amazing interiors, but still, no covers. All the covers are designed by John the Hickman. There is no cover art by Nick Batara. When I commissioned this, I had many nice interiors. I didn't have that one definitive Manhattan Projects piece. So I asked Nick for the ultimate Manhattan Projects commission with everything in it. I wasn't looking for anything elegant. I just wanted him to cram as much as he could into that piece. Throw everything in there. And boy, did he deliver. This is exactly what I wanted. The core team, along with all the supporting and periphery characters. He even snuck himself and Jonathan Hickman into the piece. This is another commission that's since been published, this time as a pinup in the hardcover collection. Nick's done some amazing Manhattan Projects commissions since this one, but I'm not sure he'll ever be able to top it, at least in terms of the sheer amount of artwork. I'm not sure he'd want to try either. I'm glad I got him when he was still willing to tackle something like this. Thanks, Nick. This is a painting of Raiders of the Lost Ark by Spanish artist San Julian. His name is probably more properly pronounced San Julian, but I'm going to go with San Julian because that's what all American collectors call him. He's best known here for his beautiful painted covers that he did for Warren magazines in the 70s. Anyway, about 10 years ago, my friend and fellow rep, Steve Morger, arranged to bring San Julian over for his show, Big Wow Comic Fest. And along with that, he took a commission list for him. I jumped right on it, even though I didn't know for sure what I was going to ask for. I wasn't a big Warren fan, so that ruled out Vampirella. Also, I didn't think St. Julian's classic oil painting style necessarily fit a typical costume superhero request. So I went with something that I thought would be in his wheelhouse, which was one of my all-time favorite movies, Raiders of the Lost Ark. As it turns out, St. Julian loves the movie too, although who doesn't? He absolutely killed this piece. I was totally blown away when I got it. Another oversized painting, which I wasn't expecting. He's done a lot of painted commissions since, and they're all wonderful, but to my eye, the first patch was St. Julian is the most inspired. They just had that extra spark. I'd put this right up there with anything Richard Amsel or Drew Struzan created for Raiders. I know it's hard for me to be objective, but I really mean it. I'd like to think George Lucas would approve. As it turns out, St. Julian will be one of the featured painters in the new museum he'll be opening in Chicago, the Lucas Museum of Narrative Art. Very well deserved for a master artist. This is a piece that will look familiar to Batman fans. It's the famous splash page from Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns. But it's not the published splash. The published splash was penciled by Frank Miller and inked by Klaus Janssen. This piece is penciled and inked by Frank Miller. It was, at the time I got this, the only commission I know of that Frank Miller had done in about 30 years. I actually got this opportunity through a friend. He'd gotten the chance to get a commission from Frank, but wasn't really collecting anymore, and more than that, didn't know what to ask for. So he let me have the shot. I had a similar dilemma. I didn't know what to ask for either. I love Frank's Dark Knight version of Batman. Frank had moved on to a new look for Batman. I wanted the beefy, chunky Dark Knight, not the slimmer, sleeker Batman that he'd been drawing since the sequel, Dark Knight Strikes Again. So I figured the safest way to get a classic Dark Knight would be to ask for something from the original series. The Dark Knight Returns number 2 cover was a candidate, except that it would have been a line-for-line -line recreation, since Frank penciled and inked that piece. I did not want a line-for-line -line recreation, so that was out. I then decided to go for an interior page that had been inked by Klaus. This way, whatever Frank did wouldn't look exactly the same, since he'd be inking at this time. It'd be all Frank. It was around this time that the Heritage Auction for the published Splash was happening. That was a piece I wanted badly, but I also knew the odds of winning it were slim. As it turns out, I was totally blown out of the water. I figured an all Frank Miller redo would be a consolation prize I could live with. So I settled on this page. It fit all the requirements. It was a piece that Frank hadn't inked originally. It was textless. 
and as a father to a young daughter, this piece spoke to me more than ever. Dark Knight is credited and or blamed for ushering in the grim and gritty era of comics. But when I look at this piece, I just see joy. Absolutely one of the most thrilling days in my collecting life when I got this. Many thanks to Frank Miller for that happy day. This is a painting by James Jean that he calls Portrait of a Young Girl. The young girl in this case being my daughter. My wife tolerates my art obsession. I have to give her credit, she's very cool. She doesn't encourage or discourage my collecting, she just lets me do my thing. But when I told her that we had an opportunity to have James Jean paint a portrait of her daughter, she didn't hesitate. Let's do it. We drove down to LA where we met James. He took a bunch of pictures for reference and we had fun hanging out. About a month or so later, he told me the painting was done. I couldn't wait to pick it up. When I showed my wife, she almost cried. We loved the result. It captures a moment in time when we were all very happy, when my daughter was a little kid and not a tween as she likes to call herself now. I'm kidding. She's an awesome kid and we're still very happy. But at the same time, I don't take anything for granted. There's a big debate amongst collectors about whether or not a commission can be a grail. Most people believe that only a published piece can be considered a grail. I'll go with that, but I'll say this. I know what my grail is, and if I had to trade this painting for it, I wouldn't do it. I don't care about the value. Yes, I know I could just ask James Jean to paint another portrait, but it wouldn't be the same. Luckily, this is a piece that won't mean anything to anyone else, but it means so much to us. In my fantasy world, I'll never sell my collection. I'll just pass it down to my daughter, who will also love comic art. I know that's probably not going to happen, but I can definitely say that this is one piece that I'll never sell. It's going to her for sure. This will sound corny, but since I've gotten this, I don't have the same tunnel vision, the same hunger, the same unrelenting drive I used to have to acquire more art. This reminds me how blessed I really am, and comic art has nothing to do with that. I am very grateful. Thank you, James.